Hi, I'm Paul Carr. And I'm Sarah Lacey. And this is Too Long Didn't Watch. And we're joined uh, on Skype today by Ezra Al Shafi, who is joining us from Bahrain. Um, Ezra, uh, first of all, apologies for not pronouncing Bahrain correctly, but uh, welcome He's to British. the show. Because I'm British. <laughs> um, so I just, um, you're from, now you're from uh, crowdvoice.org is the URL, correct? Yes. And tell us a bit about crowdvoice.org because it's, it's an amazing site. It's a really, it's an amazing idea. Tell us how it started and what it, what it does. So crowdvoice is a user powered service that tracks voices of protest from around the world um, by crowdsourcing information. And how it works is that there's a list of topics that um, our visitors select or that are already there. And, tip and typically these are uh, controversial topics dealing with human rights and freedom of speech um, or voices demanding justice. Um, for any particular cause around the world. And once the topic is created, any user has the power to submit information within it. Um, so it's kind of a new way to discover global voices of dissent. You know, I'm curious your stance on anonymity. It's something that we talk about a lot in the internet world in Silicon Valley. And, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, we jump up and down about whether or not our commenters on a story about an iPhone should have anonymity, you know, when they could be someone from Dell who's just attacking Apple, and it's like the stakes really aren't that great. But, you know, obviously we're not showing, you know, a picture of you, obviously. You know, in other parts of the world, there are very real concerns with anonymity, but there still are the concerns of, is something legit if someone's not putting their name next to it? I mean, for your site and just generally the work you do, what's your stance about anonymity online and how important it is or how it can be abused? Um, I, I can certainly see how it can be abused. Uh, we deal with that every day. Um, so we, I run a selection of websites and most of the people who participate are all anonymous. Um, but these are trusted voices that we communicate with on a regular basis, and these are people who use um, a variety of different tools and uh, softwares that make, that make sure that they are um, not traceable, that n no one will be able to track them. And that's because of where we live. Mm -hmm. um, our society is not open. Uh, we are very paranoid about um, what we do on the web and what who is watching us uh, because we do you know all the ISPs are basically state-owned and we have nowhere to go once our information is out there um, the first person who will be abusing it is our governments or any oppressive regimes or uh, political parties or militant groups and every single day on a daily basis literally you hear stories in Iran and in Egypt um, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait uh, even in the UAE um, you know, bloggers being arrested for criticizing the government, for criticizing leadership. So, I mean, I completely understand, and, and in some ways, I'm not anonymous, but I do not show my, my physical self, well, but that's because we're a relatively small country, and I prefer to be, um, to have, to be private in that way. But my name is out there, and I've met a lot of, of, of our users, um, so that's my... What do you, I mean, so you mentioned, you mentioned Iran there, and it's uh, during the election, during the presidential elections, um, there was obviously a lot of violence, and it's one of those times when social media really sort of came into its own. Um, but there was talk, you know, we saw some amazing footage coming out of I Iran, but there was a lot of talk, people said, how do we know this isn't staged? And mm -hmm. I mean, how do you, as someone who runs this kind of site, you, you're obviously not necessarily hosting a lot of this stuff, but you, you, see, you see a video, you see sort of tweets from people saying, this is happening. If it's not something you've dealt with before, because obviously the point of the site is to bring together thousands of different people with these voices of dissent, mm -hmm. how do you, you, you look at something that comes across the site, how do you know whether that's a, a legitimate voice of dissent or, or, or a government tool from whatever this country is planting something or, you know, so that it can discredit you or so that it can discredit opponents? How do you, how do you not get used as a, as a tool for the same kind of oppression that you're trying to fight? It's very easy to fall into that trap, and I have to admit we've fallen into that trap before because it's, um, you know, that's not something that you can always be 100% sure of. Um, with crowdvoice.org, we're obviously taking a lot of risks here, so we can't um, know for sure that every information that is submitted, I mean, uh, we, we're, not, we're not there 24-7 to moderate that content that is being submitted. So someone can submit information. And we'll say, okay, this is obviously relevant to, you know, uh, this protest that is happening in Russia. Um, so we'll approve it. But, you know, f for all we know, this could be some government official um, trying to trap people. So, I mean, there's never any way that you can know things like that for sure. So your, your um, approach is a kind of user beware thing. It's like, we'll put, we'll put the stuff out there, you know, almost yeah. like we'll report you decide. But, you know, we'll, we'll put out what we receive or, you know, the, uh, we're a platform. I mean, it's, it sounds like you'd rather err on the side of... Um, getting that person's voice out there, then you know, squashing every you know, squashing everything because it may or may not be legitimate, and squashing a real person's voice. 
Yeah, exactly. Because that also, you know, legitimizes a lot of censorship. You know, the, uh, what if YouTube started doing that, for example, saying, you know what, before we pub before we upload this video, we actually have to make sure whether or not it's legitimate. Um, and we have now uh, Citizen Tube, you know, which basically mm -hmm. that's what they deal with is that they post a lot of information about who is using YouTube for social change, um, and they. I'm sure that they don't know for sure whether or not the post, uh, the the videos that they're uploading is 100% legitimate either. Now you you talk about you know obviously the whole purpose of your site is voice of dissent or whatever else. What what happens if you find if you find something gets posted that supports what you might consider the opposite view? What if uh, you know you you obviously have a, a you know you'll have your own politics and the site itself is you know obviously has its pol you know has its politics. What happens if somebody posts something that says well actually you know here's for example, take the Middle East, take the situation with Israel-Palestine. What if there's, here's some violence, Palestinians against Israeli troops. Somebody post that. Now, mm -hmm. do you, do you um, like, editorialize? Do you politicize? Or are you basically like, no, we're going to take both sides and let, you know, how yeah, do you I mean, decide do you, do who's you being oppressed? legitimate voices of dissent on your site that their politics and what they're saying you also find horrible? Right. Absolutely, yeah. For example, one of, one of the examples, uh, the, the Ugandan... Uh, the anti-LGBT law that has taken place there and all the protests for it, someone has actually began posting uh, um, protest signs and blog entries that uh, is against homosexuality. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, homosexuality is the work of the devil. And we're posting it there because my idea is basically when you have something like this, you, sh you, you see the urgency of the situation. You see, okay, th these are people fighting against a real cause. You know, these are not just the, all of Uganda suddenly pro-homosexuality or pro-gay rights. So we want to show the two stories to show what the protests are taking place. And because they're, you know, we're, we're calling it um, tracking voices of protest. And we can't just say tracking voices of protest that we agree with. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. there are, uh, we, uh, in the Israel example, we posted, you know, other people were posting um, images of uh, pro-Israel rallies in the US, for example. And, and we kept them there because that's our job. OK, we're, we're basically out of time. But let me, let me just finish on one question, which is, um, you, you know, you're being anonymous for the purpose of this. What happens, you know, what, what are you worried about? What, what could happen to you as somebody who's created this site? Let's just, just give people a sense, people who maybe live in America and aren't in fear of their lives. What happens if, you, if, if you're revealed as the, the owner of this site? I mean, do you go to jail? What, what happens? Well, I mean, living in Bahrain, uh, thankfully, it, I don't think jail for cradvoice.org is an option, but definitely if we start posting, uh, you know, so far we don't have any voices from Bahrain, as you may have noticed, but if we start posting there um, about protests in Bahrain, who, which the government may not agree with, I can definitely be in trouble for that. We have laws against that. Um, the site itself can be shut down, and um, I'm also worried uh, about my family. I mean, these are things that I have to take in, into consideration. It's yeah, a huge I, I was going to ask, how does your family feel about what you're doing? Um, my family, <laughs> well, they basically just want me to stop this and get married, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if it's any consolation, my, globally. my family feels the same way about what I do, so don't, don't worry about that. Um, my family, they have no idea who I'm working for, and they keep telling my other people not to trust me. Well, uh, that's, again, I, I Again, families too. everywhere. I think we, I think we both have that. Uh, Ezra, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate appreciate, it, and, and keep on the good work with the site. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, you know, it's, again, you know, you, both you and I have been um, the sort of thing. Vo yeah, vocal about, you know, how anonymity online, like, really, do we need it that badly for all the hate it promotes? But... You but know, this is an example always, where anonymity actually does matter. I think always been clear on this. There is, and this is what the... There has to be a line, This is what the yeah. people always say when they come back at us, is, oh, you know, anonymity is, you know, what about people in Iran? What about people in Bahrain? And neither of us have ever said, you know, that person... But right. Do you know what's interesting? She's actually... That's... She wrestles with the exact same thing that Yeah, but she's about. using her name. Like, you say what you like. <laughs> you know, you're like... The, there we have somebody who's using their real name to... Right. Uh, I, 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 despite those risks, right. whereas some dick who just wants to like you know scream abuse at you or wants to wants to disagree on MG's stance on the Apple Mouse, mm -hmm. like I demand my anonymity, my rights are to be. Like, yeah, if you're not saying you, anything dude. of value, look, you can have it, fine. Yeah. But uh, you know, we get the right to say if you have it on our site, which she does as well. Right. And we get the right as a, as individual users to choose to ignore the content what you're saying or not. And if you're just spreading like bile about MG and you're anonymous, 
you're probably full of shit. Yeah. If you're talking about, you know, some sort of riots in your country, and yeah. it's a country without freedom of speech, well, then I would probably, as a reader, give you a little bit more clout. Right, and I think that's the point. There is a place for anonymity, but this blanket assumption that yeah. on the internet you're allowed to be anonymous is... Bullshit. Real quick, I mean, what does this make you think about the whole Iran thing? I mean, you wrote a column that I think sort of precipitated this whole connection about how you had an issue with people just kind of broadcasting stuff and, you know, not being involved, and you kind of think this whole set of citizen journalist oh, well, thing I think, was like I, I think, I, think I, I, I hated the idea that somebody would turn their Twitter avatar green and they were actually doing something. That really bugged me. This yeah. idea that, you know, you had all these self-righteous new media douchebags saying, Oh, I'm going to turn my, you know, I'm changing my location to Tehran. That'll show, I'm, I, you know, I mean, <laughs> no, it won't. It won't do anything. Like, right. You know, and it's this sense of I hate, the internet makes it really easy for me to forward this to 20,000 people and it will make a difference. It's like, no, it won't. Like, so, so I mean, my issue was partly with that. I, I have issues with a number of, uh, like, retweeting of things without any, you know, we talked there with Ezra about it. The retweeting things without any knowledge of whether it's true or not. You know, people say, "Have you seen this terrible video? It shows this, and it gets it gets like retweeted around the world, and no one ever stops and says, "Wait a minute, do we even know if this is real?" It's right. like people are people just automatically hit retweet because they think they're doing something, yeah. and it's which is the reason retweet is meaningless, right? Frankly, I mean, I, I saw something um, that's being passed around by an analyst earlier this week on Twitter that was like, "Hey, what do you guys think the value of a retweet is? Are you endorsing something or just saying an interesting?" I'm like. I think it's saying that you have no the respect for this own. person to take two seconds to push a fucking button. Yeah. I don't think it really says anything it's showing at all. That you actually and I think, think all of this is thing. eroding, you know, the great value of a retweet. Yeah. I don't think... <laughs> whatever happened to the good old-fashioned strong value of a retweet? Uh, yeah, I think that's... Uh, I, I don't know. I, always, I just look on Twitter and I see every week it's something new. It's like, oh, turn your Twitter avatar black for mm -hmm. Environment Day. Turn it green for Iran. Turn it. It's like, get a fucking job. You know, stop spending your whole day changing the color of your Twitter avatar in order to change the world well, because I, you're not. Look I, look, I think that it's if people want to do something to change the world, I think that's a good instinct. No, I don't think that it no, hurts to change bad. your avatar. Stop. I just think don't delude yourself that yeah, you're. You know, there are other thing. ways that you could get. No, a if you want it, like if you if it's a way of showing that you care that other. people I mean, just are getting a job yourself doesn't really I change the world. Either. <laughs> one day, I, one day I hope to happen, people. <laughs> Join us next week on, uh, <laughs> assuming that we both still have jobs, uh, on Too Long Didn't Watch. <laughs>